Hi everyone, this is Jackie at J&D Gardens. If you're a new viewer, welcome. Please help us support the channel by hitting that subscribe button. And if you're already a viewer, welcome back. Well, today we have a follow-up to our Quick Greet Walkmaker videos, where we're going to show you how to maintain your path and keep it looking great all year round. So stick around. Welcome back. So it's springtime and we're here in Garden East, which is our kind of garden. We're getting things ready for the new growing season. And believe it or not, we're just a little over a month away from when we start planting all of our canna lilies. But before we do that, we have to get Garden East looking in tip top shape. Now our planter beds are all ready to go, but we have to get the walkways looking great. Now, if you've seen some of our other videos, here in Garden East, we've made our walkways out of pavers. Not just any pavers. We use the Quick Greet Walkmaker template. And what this is, is a DIY paver mold that allows you to create a walkway out of poured concrete with very little surface prep. We'll leave a link to our how-to videos at the end of this one. But what we want to talk about today is maintaining the look of your walkway. Now, the template is designed to create individual stones. This template, which is called Country Stone, makes nine individual stones. And it'll leave a uniform gap between all the stones for you to fill it in with whatever material you choose. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of material that you can use. There's regular soil or sand, decomposed granite, and one of the more popular ones is polymeric sand. What this does is once you fill in the gaps with the sand and you wet it down, it'll actually harden and create a bond with the stones, keeping them secured in place. One of the best things about using polymeric sand is that since it hardens, it doesn't give any space for things to grow in it, especially weeds. So if you're not a big fan of maintenance, that's probably the way you're gonna wanna go. But here at J&D, we actually like to use regular soil between the stones. And no, we're not gluttons for punishment. We just like the natural look of the stone with the soil, but Having this natural look does come with some maintenance because even in the smallest amount of soil, weeds will find a way to grow in them. Now I know any kind of maintenance might sound bad to you, but I'm really making it sound worse than what it actually is. Like anything in gardening, if you keep up with it, it'll make your job so much easier. Now what I mean by that is whenever we're out here in Garden East, which is pretty much every day. Whenever we see a weed, we just grab it and pull it out. And we find that if we do that every time we're out here, it's not, it's not a problem to keep up with. Even during this past winter, where we had basically no plants growing in Garden East, we would still pull any weeds that we would see growing so we wouldn't have a nightmare to deal with come the springtime. Now, we get a lot of comments from people saying how much of a headache using regular soil can be. But as long as you take the day-by-day -day approach, your path is gonna look fine. Now, in anticipation of doing this video in the spring, we actually left a section of the garden alone to grow out as it naturally would over the winter months. And we actually have a pretty mild winter this year and it grew out a lot. So let me show you. Well, here you go. This is what happens when you use regular soil with the walk maker and don't maintain it. Does this look as bad as you all thought it would? Well, I think it does. Now, like I said, we let this section grow on purpose for this video. And we're going to show you how to clean it up. 
Now, if getting down on your hands and knees is not in the cards for you, there are different kinds of weed killers that you can use. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But for now, let's get a little dirty. So before you start, you're gonna to wanna to protect your knees as best possible. So you can use things like knee pads or a blanket. I actually like to use these foam garden pads. They're nice and thick and you can move them around wherever you need to. We'll leave some links to them below. Now, taking care of weeds and gaps is just like any other weed in your garden. You're gonna to wanna to pull them out as intact as possible, making sure to get as much of the root as you can. See, I grabbed most of the root and it's a small weed, but it's gonna have a small root, but if you can do that, that's the best way to pull them out. Now, every now and then, you're gonna have some real stubborn weeds. So you're gonna to wanna to use some kind of weeding tool, like this, if you have one. Or actually what I like to use is a simple, cheap, flathead screwdriver that I picked up at Harbor Freight. It's nice and thin, and it allows me to get into the gaps easier. Now don't worry if you disrupt the soil because once you pull all the weeds out, you can just add some more soil to fill in those gaps. So let me get to the rest of this. Now, doesn't that look much better? Now the key is to never let it get like that. Like I said, as the spring and summer months go on, if I see a weed, I'm gonna pull it out. And the maintenance is not gonna be a problem whatsoever. Now, if you don't wanna to have to pick the weeds at all, then what you can do is use some kind of weed killer. Now there's a variety of different ones on the market from companies like Ortho and Roundup but we often get a lot of flack from viewers whenever we talk about any kind of chemical weed killers. So we actually do have a more natural weed killer that is more friendly to the environment. And it's a DIY concoction that you can make with things you probably already have around the home. Let me go get them and I'll show you. So an easy recipe for a homemade weed killer will consist of white vinegar, Epsom salt, and Dawn dish detergent. So you're gonna wanna get yourself some kind of spray bottle, but what really works well is a garden pump sprayer with a wand. This is gonna allow you to add pressure to the canister, which in turn will allow you to spray the weed killer easier. We'll leave a link to one below. So you're gonna wanna take two cups of Epsom salt quarter cup of Dawn, and a gallon of white vinegar.
I like to add the vinegar last so that it'll mix up the Dawn and the Epsom salt as I pour it in. Then you're going to want to screw on the top and pump up the pressure. Okay, so you're ready. So you know what? We're going to get started. So there you go. Now to be honest with you, I don't know which one is easier, de-weeding or spraying down the entire garden. Well, spraying was definitely easier on the knees and back, I could tell you that. But actually, we like to spray the garden in the beginning of the season or whenever we do a big de-weeding. This is because whenever we pull weeds out of the ground, we're bound to leave a few roots behind, which if not taken care of, they'll come back and grow, well, like weeds. So spraying your path down with some kind of weed killer is definitely gonna make your life a lot easier for the season. So with a little bit of routine maintenance, you can have your path looking beautiful all year round. And if you're interested in different videos on the Quick Read Walk Maker, we have an entire section on our channel devoted to it. So be sure to check them out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And I hope you're excited for the spring growing season the way we are. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. We would absolutely love to hear from you. And be sure to hit like and subscribe and ring that bell to let you know of any future videos. And if you have a friend who's interested in gardening, please share the channel with them. We would really, really appreciate that. So from all of us here at J&D, till next time, remember, yes we can. Uh.